introduce a blend, so maybe this is plat, at, and he has to manipulate those sounds. Um, we'll do this over and over and over again until that sound structure is automatic. And we always, for these kids who have reading to, and let me just say too, that good reading instruction is good reading instruction. So it doesn't matter if you're the most severely dyslexic kid in the world, or you're Mary the overachiever. Mary the overachiever is going to learn to read faster and more efficiently being given good reading instruction that I'm talking about tonight. Now Billy, who struggles and is dyslexic and has a, you know, a neurological wiring problem, may need more intense instruction for a longer period of time, but we can rewire the uh, neural pathways in the brain, and that's actually been studied. It's a really cool study done at uh, Yale's Haskins lab. They took two kids, they, they controlled for as much as they could. They controlled for IQ, they uh, controlled for SES, they controlled for parents' level of education, they controlled for the parents' value of literacy. And the, and the only ostensible difference in these kids, there were other differences, but the, the biggest difference between these kids was that uh, Johnny was a traditional learner and, and learned to read easily, and Billy didn't. Billy was dyslexic, far on the continuum of dyslexia, severely impacted. And what they did was use functional magnetic resonance imaging. And they, had, they gave uh, the both boys the same passage to read. And then they put them in this, they had their brain scanned. And they, see, they, they saw for kids with no learning problems, no reading problems, their, their neural pathways lit up in a certain consistent way. The kids with reading issues, that pathway didn't light up. Okay, so we know it's neurological and, ba and, and basis. But the interesting thing is, with good remediation, and you know, how intense was that re remediation? How long did it have to go on for? Well, very, uh, depending on the individual. But what they saw across the board was that the neural pathway of reading rewired itself and it lit up. And, and, and for some kids, it lit up as quickly as just three months. Okay, So we know that we can intervene and make brain change uh, because of that. We call that brain plasticity. So what we want to do for kids with a reading issue, whether it's phonemic in nature or if it's a phonics issue, is we have to teach to automaticity. We have to over-teach so it's, it's automatic, where they don't have to think about it, it just comes out. And you teach automaticity at this level, and you teach automaticity at every subsequent uh, stage of acquiring reading. Really, really important. And it frustrates a lot of our first-time parents here, because we have to go back and reteach to make sure that that foundation is strong and that they, those skills are automatic. Because if they're not automatic, I'll guarantee you it's going to break down later in the process. So how do we teach phonemic awareness? Well, we do these kinds of things. We can, and these are things that you can do, too, with the younger children. You clap at the sound, so cat will clap at. We can play rhyming games. We can say cowboy without the boy, what's left. We use colored blocks to represent sounds. We can give examples, uh, rhyming games. Um, we can read Ryan, uh, Shel Silverstein's great to, for kids for, to build phonemic awareness. Um, rhyming word sit down games, there's lots of things we can do. Now when we get the phonemic awareness solid with the kids, we can move on to phonics. And phonics simply is symbol sound association. That the, the letter S says so with our kids here, we will teach these cards if they're not automatic. So we'll say, um, they'll, they'll see the card, and they'll say S, snake, S. Now, S always makes the S sound, right? No, it doesn't, because if you look at the word nose, it makes the Z sound. So there's certain, and they have to learn that separately. Okay, so there's certain rules 
in the English language that take place, and, and we have to bring those to the surface and teach those. But phonics is just that symbol sound association. So we teach cat, now we move from sounds, right? And now they've learned their cards, and the other important thing when we're teaching reading is that as we teach reading, we're teaching spelling at the same time, so they complement one another. But we're not teaching spelling like your kids learn spelling, my kids learn spelling, by bringing 20 unrelated spelling words on and having them memorize them. That's a real efficient use of time. Instead, we're going to give the same spelling patterns as we are teaching reading, so that the kids can see that there's an inextricable link between spelling and reading. So after the kids have, have automaticity with their letters, I'm going to ask Billy to spell cat. And he's going to go, ah. And then I'm going to ask him to, to spell it, C-A-T, cat. And, you know, I'm starting at a very basic level, but we will have kids then start blending, initial blends like, you know, something like plat, make-believe word, but PL would be a blend, and then at the end, final blends too. So we'll build and build and build. We'll build out from the simple to the more complex. We'll get into, after we've done initial and final blends, we'll do two-syllable words. And, you know, without blends and then with blends and on and on and on. Now, what happens um, when the kids, so good, they've got cat, right? And now we throw at them this word to read. And this, so all of a sudden, what's this word? Kitty, right? Because they've learned C, cat. Well, then, then this is another rule of English that C, followed by I, E, or Y, says S. So we're going to have to then give them this new rule and give them many, 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 many examples of words that follow these patterns. And when, they, when it's drawn out to the surface and taught explicitly, they'll pick it up quickly. Okay? But it has to be done with some purpose. Again, it's very important that we teach reading and spelling together so that they reinforce each other. And we find that good spelling instruction, like what I'm talking about, will, will bolster reading progress. Ellen? I just want to add to what you said um, that um, one of the things that's also really important with teaching reading is that the reading teacher have a good, really good sense of the developmental order of teaching sounds. I mean, when you, when you teach C says K, uh, you don't want to start confusing them with, oh, by the way, it says S when it's followed by I, E, or Y, you know, like right away. We want to get them so they're very solid. Um, I find that some of the problems I see with children who come here uh, from other places is that they've been taught certain sound symbol correspondences, but it's been very, um, it's not sequential, it's very lopsided, and then that tends to lead toward confusion over, you know. What, what that does is we, we call our kids who come in um, having a Swiss cheese kind of um, mm -hmm. profile. And what that means is that there are holes all through their, their literacy foundation where you wouldn't expect them because exactly that. They have not been taught on a developmental, an appropriate developmental continuum of skills. <coughs> and they've been jumping around and they haven't learned some, some very important base skills that need to be built upon for more advanced skills later. So now we're moving out of, we're into our third uh, of five stages of reading. So we, we've tackled phonemic awareness, we have automaticity with phonemic awareness, we have automaticity with phonics, symbol sound, and, and, and reading phonetically controlled words at the, at the word level, okay? At the word level. Now we have to move to connected text, okay? And we need to get fluent. 
And if a child, I'll guarantee you, if we don't have fluency with a child, then we're not going to have comprehension later. Because if it, and fluency simply is, it's really three things, but two are more important, I think. Uh, fluency is rate and accuracy. Okay? So if you're not reading quickly enough, if, if reading is so laborious, if it takes you so long to pull the written word off the page, you literally don't have enough mental energy left to make sense of what you're